Hi, this is Greg Althaus. I'm CTO and co-founder of Racken. We provide digital rebar and digital rebar provision as open source products that do bare metal provisioning, cloud provisioning, cloud orchestration, and bare metal. Today I want to show using DR provision to deploy Linux kit from Docker. Uh, they're a mutable operating system that's for running containers. So why don't we get started? So first, their DR provision, you can get it from GitHub under digital rebar provision. And then Linux kit is under Linux kit at Linux kit. Um, and we have some documentation here in our latest tree. And we'll just kind of start from that. So the first thing we need to do is get digital rebar provision. And so we're gonna use the quick start and we're going to tell it to get the latest tip of the tree where some of the stuff is, is. We're going to install it in isolated mode so that it keeps it all in a local directory. So it's downloaded it from GitHub, made it available, and checksummed it and all of that. At this point, I'm going to start Digital Rebar Provision. And then I'm going to have it include the discovery boot environments. These are used to discover machines, do inven kind of inventory of them, and then allow them to boot to their local disks. These are kind of some basic parameters just to get started. It's going to download stuff, explode them. So while that's going on, we'll move on to the next step. We're going to get Linux kit and build it. Linux kit has a tool called um, Moby and it needs to be built. It requires Go, so my system already has Go on it. So what I'm running this on is an Ubuntu system that already has Go installed and Docker installed so that I can do this these parts. It's also got KVM set up with QMU so that I can run some virtual machines and we'll talk about that in a minute. Once I've got Moby built I need to edit some files so I can build some ISO images. So the first thing I want to do is edit my SSH example because we're going to just create a simple ISO to SSH into. To do that I need to make sure my SSH key is available. So I'm going to already generated SSH key. So I'm going to pull that in and then notice it's already got the ISO format I need. So then I save that and I run this Moby command which will actually build the ISO. So in this case, I've already kind of preloaded into Docker some of these images because I've done this a few times now. So that part's fairly quick, but it's going to build the ISO. And it's built it. So once the ISO is done, I want to copy it into my digital rebar provision assets ISOs directory so that I can upload it into digital pre provision here in a minute. All right, so now I also am going to try and do Kubernetes. So I'm going to edit the files for that as well. And the same thing, I want to make sure my SSH key is available. So I'm going to pull that in. If I can type. And a quick edit of that. And so there's that. But one of the things to note is, by default, the Kubernetes only builds um, a kernel and an NITRD. In this case, I want it also to include the ISO so that I can use it with digital rebar provision. And we'll do the same thing for the node and ISO BIOS. With those edits complete, I do make, and that'll go off and start making those ISOs. They take a little longer to build. Again, a lot of it's already been cached on my system. It may take a little longer for you. So we'll let that run. So at this part point, I have my boot environments and digital provision set up. They're downloaded, they're uploaded, and I've even changed the default so that we'll do discovery and automatically discover nodes versus just ignoring things that, that might DHCP. So at this point, I need to configure a network. So I'm gonna go over to my UI. I could do this through the CLI as well. But in this case, I'm going to show you the CLI. Uh, you go to port 8092, which is the API port, and you can hit the UI. In this case, I put my token into the helper um, so that I can log in. We can see that the boot environments are available. My preferences are already set. 
and I need a subnet. I don't have one. So this gives me a choice of the interfaces on my local box. Uh, I know my KVM instances are going to be attached to the Docker instance. So in this case, I'm going to choose a subnet range that's not the Docker one, but I'm going to use one that kind of runs on parallel with it. We do that for some of our other testing. Anyway, it automatically fills in some values for you, gives you a range of about 10 nodes to start with. You can change that, as well as it sets up the boot options. So in this case, we're just going to boot Pixie Linux and go from there. So I add my subnet, and that becomes available. And so with that available, I can now start my KVM instances. So I come over here to my digital rebar tools. All this is, is a wrap around QMU that lets me, if I close the window, it reboots the node. And it just connects the K, um, KVM instances into Docker Zero and tells it to Pixie boot all the time. That's the basic setup I have. So I'm going to start a few of those. One, two, and three. And we can see them come up. And they'll start booting. They'll start Pixie booting. And I can see them um, go through and pull up Sledgehammer. So in this case, I can see them starting to load Sledgehammer, which is our discovery image. And if I look over here, I can see digital provision handing out DHCP messages and and passing out all those addresses. So eventually the machines will show up. Let's see, how's our build doing? We're almost done with our ISO. Um, both the ISOs are built. The master ISO is and the node is just finished. We have to copy those ISOs into the digital provision um, assets ISOs directory so that they're available. And at this point, we're done with Linux Kit. Everything's been built. The images are fairly static. So at this point, all we're going to do is serve them. At this point, I need to add my Linux Kit boot environments, which happen to also be as part of our tools. So we'll look at those real quick. In this case, I have this is the master one. It's going to use the master ISO, create a boot environment called LK. LKS master, and we have our boilerplate boot things. We'll just tell it to boot the kernel that they provided and the init RD. And they all kind of look similar. Right? In fact, that's the beauty of the Linux kit stuff is that it's basically a kernel and an NRD. And we just boot those things and away it goes. Um, so now with that in place, I need to install those. So if I do my drpcli command, I can do machines list, make sure those are running. There's my machine showing up, they're now discovered. But in this case, I need to add my boot environments first. Bootems, install, lksshd. It already exploded the, and uploaded the ISO. K8's master, same thing. The ISO is a little bigger, so it takes a little longer. And the same with node. So now I have my nodes, I have my machines. So now I can say, I can, oops, I can change them. So I can either change them to the CLI, or in this case, I can use the UI. I'll refresh that and should see my new boot environments. They should be available. Sometimes boot environments are available because they're missing ISOs. Those will show up as errors that you can then remedy. But in this case, I'm going to choose 20 to be my SSH system. I'll choose update that. And then I'll choose 21 to be my master. Update it. And then 22 will be my node. And update that. And so if I do my lists, I can see they're all reset. So at this point, I need to reboot my nodes. Digital rebar provision doesn't handle lifecycle. It assumes that you have some mechanism and method to do that. Um, digital rebar will do all lifecycle as well as provision, but digital rebar provision is just focused on the smaller piece. So at this point, we should be able to see uh, this one's booting the, SSH, the SSHD image, and these two should be booting the others. So 
At this point, we're now booting the appropriate kernels and per node just by changing that. If I wanted to change it, I could go back into DR provision, reset it, and that would go and then reboot the nodes and they would come up the other way. So now we're, we're provisioning. These images are, are not really install images, so they're just going to sit in this for uh, their life cycle. Um, and so once this finishes, we should be able to SSH in or do the other parts of the, uh, for the Kubernetes, bring up Kubernetes. So let's see, where are we at? We've done the build scripts, we've done the upload scripts, we've validated the nodes, we've run some nodes. There's some examples of the commands to run manually or from the command line. And so at this point, our SSH node is almost done. They're booting. My system is getting a workout as these systems come up. Um, the SSH system is almost done. And in this case, I was going to do SSH root at 192.168.124.20. And we're not quite up yet. Make sure it's 20. And waiting for the interfaces to come up. And there it is. Our SSH daemon's up and running. We're logged in. This is the um, this node here. If I hit, and so that's good. So uh, there's my SSH. I can do that over and again. I can do other commands from here. Um, the system, the Linux systems or Alpine systems are very lightweight, um, very small, not many tools. So now I can try and SSH into my master node, which I don't think is quite done yet. And my, there's my um, Kubernetes node. In this case, I want to do the master first. So at this point, I need to run an init script inside to start up the Kubernetes master. So to do that, I need to get into the kubelet container. So I'll run the kubelet, the ns enter command, followed by the kube admin init. And at this point, it's going to run. It's going to start up the containers, build some config files. It uses the kube atom tool to um, set up the environment. At this point, we wait for the control plane to come up. Um, looks like it's starting to come up. And once it's done, it will then give me a command to run to add the others. In fact, it's already added and pulled in additional containers to run the Weave networking system. So at this point, I take the, the join script that I need. I can exit out of this and this, and I go to my node. I have to do the same ns enter command because the base container doesn't have very much in it. And I run the kube atom join command. Now I would do this for all the nodes that I want to add to my cluster. And so in this case, it's slowly going to bring those up. It's now added those. And it says I can go see the nodes on my Kubernetes join. So at this point, I can go back to my admin node. I go back into my kubelet container because that's where the tools are. And at this point, I can run and I can see my two nodes are coming up. In this case, I put the admin node on 192.68.21. So this will take a few minutes to get everything running, I suspect. But while that's going on, I can come over here. Since my nodes can NAT, but they can't, um, they can NAT out, but I can't get to them, I need to do a tunnel. So I'll set that up. And let's see if I can get to the admin for the Kubernetes. 
I think this will tell me the permissions are denied. Yeah. So the point is the API is available. If you were to set up the rest of your infrastructure, you have Kubernetes running. And so now I have two nodes that are ready. They could run containers and I've kind of been running. All of that in about 10, 15 minutes. And I have used Linux kit and digital provision to set up a, a Kubernetes cluster. Hope you find that interesting uh, and useful. Obviously, any questions, find us on um, Gitter or Slack, and you can find more information at Digital Rebar and rebar.digital. Thanks, and have a nice day.